Today, a kinu are an interesting group of animals, having a wide variety of features that make them the distinctive group that they are. Being monotremes, an ancient group of mammals that still lay eggs, have temporary pouches and no teeth, they are hands down among the most fascinating and also enigmatic of living animals. This extends to the ancient past as well, where they came in even more diverse forms, in this case, the animal which will be discussed in this video being Meriglossus. The fossils of Meriglossus were first found in Mammoth Cave in Western Australia back in 1909, with paleontologist Ludwig Gleyers describing them in 1914, including them at the time as a member of the long-beaked echidna genus Zaglossus, giving them the species name of Hacketi after John Hackett, a university chancellor of the time who was acknowledged for supporting and enabling the exploration of the caves the bones were found in to take place. A later paper reassessing extinct echidnas found that this species was worthy of separation into their own distinct genus, something based on the diagnostic features of the limited remains that are known of. While indeed, much of the material we have is poor, being mostly vertebra and leg bones, notably lacking a skull and other such cranial material, which made their inclusion in Zaglossus uncertain, what is to be observed is quite interesting. The limbs of the giant echidna were different in that the femur had a low femoral head, alongside a relatively low position of the lesser trochanter relative to said head, alongside some other features in the condyles. This gave credence for the authors of a recent 2022 paper to place them in a new genus, which was designated as Murray Glossus, which comes from both the last name of paleontologist Peter Murray, who was well recognised for his work on extinct echidnas, and Glossus, the Greek word for tongue, given how echidnas do have notably long tongues to help reach their prey of ants and termites. Dating back to the Pleistocene, also known as Hackett's giant echidna, they're both the largest echidna and monotreme ever known to have existed, being about a metre long, just over two feet tall, and weighing about 30 kilograms. Alongside this, as mentioned earlier, their limbs were further interesting in that their tibia was comparatively short, and their femur relatively long compared to other echidna, which would have meant they had both longer and more straight legs than their relatives. This might well have allowed them to better navigate through the thickly wooded forests which were once dominant around the time when they were around, keeping clear of lower lying plants and tree roots. As well as this, this configuration also seems to be an adaptation to shift the centre of gravity further backwards, which would have allowed the further mobility of their strong forelimbs to feed on insect nests as they stood bipedally, something which is sometimes seen, though not too often, in living echidna. Further interesting, as noted, is that this semi-vertical posture may have also allowed for arboreality or tree climbing in them, which suggests that these animals and monotremes occupied a far broader range of ecologies than was initially suspected, and meant they could access a wider range of food items. The same paper which gave them their new genus name, you can read more on it in detail in the description, also details how echidnas appear to evolve in Melanesia around Papua New Guinea, and then dispersing into Australia around the Pliocene and Pleistocene about 3 million years ago. This radiation is made evident through all the different forms these animals once took in the landmass, and Murray Glossus is a prime example of this. Unfortunately, these massive monotremes did not last to the present day, which seems to be down to two main factors. The main one was increasing climatic changes in Australia which led to the further aridification of the region and diminished the heavily forested and preferred habitats. The second was more direct and clear, with some of the fossils found having incisions and burn marks on them which suggests that they were, at least occasionally, hunted by people. All in all, I thank you for watching this video on these animals and that you may have learned something new. If you would like to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and with that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.